Greetings, curious humans! Welcome to a groundbreaking journey beyond our blue planet Earth as we venture into the enigmatic world of Mars. I am Cybot GPT, your AI educator, and today, we're embarking on a thrilling quest to uncover one of the most significant mysteries of the red planet, water on Mars. Mars, our neighboring planet, has long captivated the human imagination. Its barren deserts, frigid polar caps, and ancient volcanoes have tantalized scientists and astronomers for centuries. But amidst this arid landscape, tantalizing clues suggest the presence of a vital ingredient for life as we know it, water. Over the decades, robotic emissaries from our planet have been exploring the Martian surface, gathering crucial data to help unlock the secrets of this alien world. From the Viking landers in the 1970s to the modern-day rovers like Curiosity and Perseverance, each mission has provided us with vital pieces of the puzzle. Today, we'll delve into the fascinating discoveries made by these intrepid explorers and the ingenious methods scientists have used to study the elusive water on Mars. We'll also unravel the implications these findings hold for our understanding of the planet's history and the potential for extraterrestrial life. But before we dive deeper into this captivating mystery, let's explore why water is so crucial for the existence of life, and why its presence on Mars could have profound implications for the future of human space exploration. So, dear space enthusiasts, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on this riveting voyage to unravel the mysteries of water on Mars. If you're as curious as I am about the cosmos and its endless wonders, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of our captivating space odysseys. Join me in our mission to unveil the hidden truths of Mars. Let's blast off on this epic adventure together. On Mars today, water primarily exists as ice, with small quantities of vapor in the atmosphere. The presence of liquid water was once thought to occur as low-volume liquid brines, but recent findings suggest that these may be grains of flowing sand and dust. Water ice is exposed at the surface in several locations, including impact craters, scarps, gullies, and the polar ice caps. Although transient liquid water may exist on the Martian surface in the form of thin films and traces of dissolved moisture, the low atmospheric pressure prevents large standing bodies of liquid water. Billions of years ago, Mars likely had a denser atmosphere and higher temperatures, supporting vast amounts of liquid water, potentially even an ocean covering a third of the planet's surface. Today, Mars is dry and subfreezing, with a thin atmosphere and no thick ozone layer or magnetic field to protect against harmful radiation. This harsh environment makes it challenging for life to survive on the surface. Subsurface environments may hold more promise for potential habitats. Understanding the distribution and extent of water on Mars is crucial for evaluating its potential for harboring life and providing resources for future human exploration. NASA and ESA missions have provided valuable data on water's abundance and distribution, and discoveries are ongoing. In September 2020, scientists confirmed the existence of several large saltwater lakes under ice in the south polar region of Mars. Furthermore, in March 2021, researchers reported that a significant amount of water has likely been sequestered into the rocks and crust of the planet over the years. Overall, exploring water on Mars is a vital scientific pursuit to unravel the planet's history and assess its potential for life and human exploration. The idea of water on Mars dates back hundreds of years before the space age. Early telescopic observers correctly identified the white polar caps in clouds as indications of water's presence. Astronomer William Herschel, in 1784, speculated that Mars might offer conditions similar to Earth and could possibly harbor inhabitants. By the 20th century, astronomers realized that Mars was much colder and drier than Earth, and the notion of oceans on the planet was abandoned. Astronomer Percival Lowell popularized the idea of a dying planet with limited water, envisioning Martians constructing canals to transport water from the poles to the equator. While his ideas gained public enthusiasm, they were largely rejected by the scientific community. Spectroscopy was employed to study the Martian atmosphere, and while carbon dioxide was confirmed in 1947, water vapor detection did not occur until 1963. 
The polar cap's composition was initially believed to be water ice, but in 1966, it was confirmed that the caps were primarily composed of carbon dioxide ice, with a permanent cap of water ice at the northern pole during summer. Mariner 4's mission in 1965 provided critical information, showing a surface with impact craters, suggesting little erosion and a lack of recent liquid water activity. The spacecraft also revealed an atmospheric pressure less than 1% of Earth's, making liquid water existence improbable. Later, Mariner 9 presented a more dynamic Mars, indicating a more favorable past environment than the present one. NASA's Curiosity and Opportunity rovers continue to explore Mars, searching for evidence of ancient life and past habitable environments, including fluvial lacustrine environments and ancient water. In 2015, research showed that observed remains of floods were caused by the release of water from regional deposits of sediment and ice placed 450 million years earlier. In summary, the concept of water on Mars has evolved over centuries of observation and exploration, leading to a better understanding of the planet's history and potential for life. Mars is believed to have had abundant water early in its history, but most large bodies of liquid water have since disappeared. A portion of this water is retained on modern Mars as both ice and locked into water-rich materials, including clay minerals and sulfates. The source of Mars water is thought to come from asteroids and comets beyond 2.5 astronomical units, and it currently totals 6% to 27% of Earth's present ocean. The primary rock type on the Martian surface is basalt, and when exposed to water and atmospheric gases, these minerals chemically weather into new minerals, some of which incorporate water into their structures. Examples of hydrated minerals include gephyte, gypsum, opaline silica, and phyllosilicates like kaolinite and montmorillonite. Aqueous minerals are sensitive indicators of past environmental conditions on Mars. pH and oxidation reduction potential play crucial roles in determining which minerals are thermodynamically stable and likely to form from specific aqueous components. Hydrothermal alteration can also lead to the formation of aqueous minerals in the subsurface, driven by migrating hydrothermal fluids. Serpentinization is one such process that creates an alkaline and reducing environment, favoring the formation of certain phyllosilicates and carbonate minerals, potentially providing habitats for chemosynthetic organisms. Weathering rates of primary minerals into secondary aqueous minerals vary, with olivine being one of the most common minerals that weather rapidly on Mars. Overall, the presence of aqueous minerals on Mars offers insights into the planet's past environmental conditions, including those potentially conducive to supporting life. Over 60 meteorites from Mars have been found on Earth. Some of these meteorites show evidence of exposure to water while on Mars, with some even suggesting exposure to liquid water. Meteorites like basaltic shergatites appear to have been in contact with liquid water before being ejected into space. The Naclites, another class of Martian meteorites, were found to have been infused with liquid water around 620 million years ago and were ejected from Mars about 10.75 million years ago. In 1996, there were reports of possible microfossils in the Allen Hills 84001 meteorite from Mars, but the interpretation was later disputed, and most of the organic matter was found to be of terrestrial origin. Evidence of water on Mars is also observed through geomorphic features like river valleys and lake basins. Images from the Mariner 9 spacecraft revealed huge river valleys, floods, and branched streams, suggesting that rain once fell on Mars. Mars Global Surveyor discovered many examples of inverted streams, where sediments deposited on the floor of a stream became resistant to erosion, creating visible streams when the covering layer eroded away. Various lake basins have been identified on Mars, some comparable in size to Earth's largest lakes. Some of these lakes may have formed from precipitation or groundwater, and their existence suggests a cold, dry hydrological environment in Mars' past. In 2012, NASA's Curiosity rover found direct evidence of an ancient streambed in Gale Crater, indicating a past vigorous flow of water on Mars. Pebbles and gravel fragments in the streambed suggested long-distance transport from higher elevations. The Eridania Lake is a theorized ancient lake on Mars, covering a vast surface area and holding a considerable volume of water. 
research with chrism found thick deposits containing various minerals, including some associated with hydrothermal processes, possibly suggesting potential places where life could have originated. Overall, the evidence of water on Mars through meteorites and geomorphic features provides valuable insights into the planet's past climate and potential for habitability. Researchers have discovered evidence of deltas on Mars, indicating the presence of significant liquid water in the past. Deltas typically form in stable, deep water over extended periods. These features have been found across a wide geographical range, with some indication that they may be more concentrated around the edges of a former northern ocean on Mars. In the past, it was thought that outflow channels were created by catastrophic ruptures of subsurface water reservoirs, leading to massive flooding across the Martian surface. However, the branching valley networks observed on Mars suggest a different process. Some researchers proposed that these valleys were formed by slow seepage of groundwater from the subsurface, resembling springs. The upstream ends of many valleys in these networks start with amphitheater heads, which are associated with groundwater seepage on Earth. Groundwater has also played a crucial role in controlling sedimentation patterns on Mars. It is believed that groundwater with dissolved minerals came to the surface in and around craters, forming layers by adding minerals and cementing sediments. This cementation process helps preserve and protect the layers from erosion. In 2019, European scientists reported geological evidence of an ancient planet-wide groundwater system that may have been connected to a vast ocean on Mars. Additionally, the InSight lander detected magnetic pulses and oscillations consistent with a planet-wide reservoir of liquid water deep underground. Overall, the presence and influence of groundwater on Mars provide valuable insights into the planet's geological history and the potential for liquid water resources in its past. The Mars Ocean Hypothesis suggests that a large ocean of liquid water, known as Oceanus Borealis, once existed on Mars, filling the Vastitas Borealis Basin in the Northern Hemisphere. Evidence from various studies points to the presence of two putative shorelines, with the higher one dating back to approximately 3.8 billion years ago and the lower one possibly correlated with younger outflow channels. Debate continues among scientists about the existence and extent of this ancient ocean. Studies using data from Mars missions have estimated that the primordial Martian ocean could have covered around 36% to 75% of the planet's surface. This ocean would have required a warmer climate and denser atmosphere to support liquid water at the surface. The presence of numerous valley networks on Mars also supports the possibility of a past hydrological cycle. Some features interpreted as ancient shorelines have been met with skepticism, and explanations for the non-flatness of the conjectured 2-billion-year-old shoreline have been proposed, such as changes in Mars' mass distribution due to volcanic activity or meteor impacts. In 2015, scientists reported evidence supporting the idea of an ancient Martian ocean in the planet's northern hemisphere, approximately the size of Earth's Arctic Ocean. A high ratio of deuterium in the Martian atmosphere compared to Earth suggests higher past water levels on Mars. Subsequent evidence, including signs of tsunamis and impact craters, has added support to the hypothesis of a northern ocean that may have persisted for millions of years. In January 2022, a study on the climate of Mars 3 billion years ago proposed a stable ocean with a closed water cycle, including the circulation of the ocean, which could have prevented it from freezing and led to the formation of ancient glacial valleys. While the idea of an ancient Martian ocean remains a topic of ongoing research and debate, the evidence suggests that Mars may have had significant liquid water in its distant past, which has significant implications for understanding the planet's geologic history and potential habitability. The presence of liquid water on the surface of Mars is limited due to its low atmospheric pressure and low temperature, which would cause pure liquid water to boil except at the lowest elevations for a short period during the warmest months. However, observations from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter in 2006 revealed gully deposits that were not present a decade earlier, suggesting the possibility of flowing liquid brine during the warmest months on Mars. There is ongoing debate among scientists regarding the origin of gullies and whether they are formed by liquid water or other processes. Some studies propose that the flows carving gullies could be dry grains or lubricated by carbon dioxide. 
Others suggest that the gullies forming in the colder regions could be a result of solid carbon dioxide melting during warmer summer months, forming liquid carbon dioxide that creates the gullies. In 2011, NASA announced the discovery of recurrent slope lineae, RSL, dark streaks seen to grow downslope during the warmest part of Martian summer and fade during the rest of the year. These streaks were proposed to be consistent with salty water flowing downslope and evaporating, possibly leaving behind some residue. Spectroscopic observations confirmed the presence of hydrated chlorate and perchlorate salts in the lineae, indicating the presence of liquid water molecules. However, the exact source of the water remains unknown. An alternative scenario suggests that the RSLs may be caused by a Knudsen pump effect, where shadows in a granular material create dry granular avalanches. Some researchers argue that the detection of water in RSLs was only indirect, via salt detection but not direct water detection, and the water on Mars may be limited to traces of dissolved moisture from the atmosphere and thin films, making it challenging for life as we know it to exist. The nature of the RSLs and the potential presence of liquid water on Mars continue to be subjects of active research and debate in the scientific community. Observations from spacecraft orbiting Mars have detected significant amounts of surface hydrogen, which is believed to be incorporated into the molecular structure of ice. Stoichiometric calculations have revealed widespread and abundant water ice on the present surface of Mars. Ice concentrations below 60 degrees latitude are particularly found around the Elysium volcanoes, Terra Sabia, and northwest of Terra Serenum, with up to 18% ice in the subsurface. Above 60 degrees latitude, ice is highly abundant, with concentrations exceeding 25% and approaching 100% at the poles. The Mars Odyssey neutron spectrometer indicates that the globally averaged Martian surface contains approximately 14% water if all the ice in the top meter were spread evenly. The water ice at the poles corresponds to a layer with a depth of 30 meters, and evidence suggests even larger quantities of surface water over Martian history, with depths up to 500 meters. Some of this past water has likely been lost to the deep subsurface and to space, but the detailed mass balance of these processes remains uncertain. The presence of hydrated salts on Mars has led to the possibility of liquid brines, which could stabilize liquid water at lower temperatures than pure water alone. However, the complex nature of the Martian regolith and salt mixtures may not significantly increase the stability of brines, raising uncertainty about their existence on the surface of Mars. Overall, Mars has substantial water ice reserves in its subsurface, and while pure liquid water is unstable on the surface due to its low atmospheric pressure and temperature, the presence of water ice and potential for brines make it an important subject of scientific investigation and exploration. The Martian polar caps, known since the time of the Mariner 9 orbiter, contain significant amounts of ice. The Mars Express and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter missions have confirmed the existence of relatively clean ice in the South Polar Ice Cap, extending to a depth of 3.7 kilometers below the surface, and the North Polar Cap, which extends about 1.5 to 2 kilometers below the surface. The combined volume of ice in both polar caps is comparable to the Greenland ice sheet on Earth. Additionally, there are many smaller ice sheets inside craters, some of which are covered by thick deposits of sand or dust. For example, the Korolev crater is estimated to contain approximately 2,200 cubic kilometers of exposed water ice. Subglacial lakes have also been hypothesized and detected on Mars. In July 2018, scientists reported the discovery of a subglacial lake about 1.5 kilometers below the southern polar ice cap, spanning 20 kilometers horizontally. In September 2020, three more subglacial lakes were reported in the same region. The presence of these lakes suggests the possibility of liquid water being stable due to the antifreeze effect of magnesium and calcium perchlorates, although the temperatures at the base of the polar cap are extremely cold. The source of heat necessary to maintain liquid water could be attributed to geothermal activity or nearby magmatic activity. If liquid lakes do exist on Mars, the water would likely be mixed with soil to form a sludge, and the high levels of salt in the water may present challenges for life as we know it. However, some organisms on Earth, known as halophiles, thrive in extremely salty conditions and may provide insights into how life could adapt to such environments on Mars.
Various features on Mars suggest the presence of frozen water beneath its surface, resembling periglacial regions on Earth. These features include patterned ground, scallop-shaped depressions, and eroding slopes showing exposed water ice sheets covered by soil. These ice deposits hold clues about Mars' climate history and make frozen water accessible for future exploration. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, and Mars Express missions have provided evidence for significant amounts of water ice in both polar caps, with some ice sheets as thick as 100 meters, covered by a layer of soil. The existence of subglacial lakes has also been hypothesized, and in 2018, a subglacial lake about 1.5 kilometers below the southern polar ice cap was detected, with more discovered in 2020. Additionally, many patches of ice have been found scattered across the Martian surface, particularly in the mid-latitudes. These patches are often covered by debris to prevent complete sublimation. Some surface features in the southern Elysium planitia resemble existing pack ice, indicating possible frozen lakes in the region. The discovery of underground ice in the Utopia planitia region, equivalent to the volume of water in Lake Superior, further supports the presence of significant water resources on Mars. These water resources could be crucial for future robotic or human explorations on the planet. Large areas of Mars are believed to host glaciers or show evidence of past glacial activity. These glacier-like features are known as viscous flow features, Martian flow features, lobate debris aprons, or lineated valley fill, depending on their characteristics and locations. Many of these glaciers are found in high latitudes and are suspected to contain significant amounts of water ice protected from sublimation by thin coverings of insulating rock and dust. Glaciers on Mars have been identified in various regions, including Hecate's Tholus, Arcea Mons, Pavoni's Mons, and Olympus Mons. They are often associated with gullies and volcanoes. Lobate debris aprons are glacier-like features that contain almost pure ice covered by a layer of rocks. Moving ice on Mars carries rock material and leaves behind features known as moraine-like ridges, concentric ridges, or arcuate ridges. These ridges provide evidence of the direction of ice movement. Mars glaciers are typically cold-based, meaning they are frozen down to their beds and cannot slide, resulting in unique glacial features compared to those on Earth. While there is strong evidence for glacial flow on Mars, there is little evidence for landforms carved by glacial erosion, like U-shaped valleys or drumlins, which are abundant on Earth. This is attributed to the cold-based nature of recent glaciers on Mars, which inhibits their ability to erode the surface. The presence of glaciers and glacial features on Mars provides valuable information about its past climate and water history, and their study is crucial for future explorations on the planet. Mars' surface water content has undergone significant changes throughout its history, influenced by various stages in the evolution of its atmosphere. During the early Noachian era, heavy meteoritic bombardment and hydrodynamic escape resulted in atmospheric loss to space. This period may have seen the formation of phyllosilicates, indicating moderate water-to-rock ratios. In the middle to late Noachian era, Mars potentially developed a secondary atmosphere from outgassing dominated by the Tharsis volcanoes, leading to widespread surface water evident in Martian valley networks. The end of this era coincided with the termination of the internal magnetic field and increased meteoritic bombardment. During the Hesperian to Amazonian era, sporadic outgassing events and solar wind stripping of the atmosphere led to fluctuations in atmospheric enhancement. Catastrophic floods occurred during this period, favoring sudden subterranean release of volatiles. Oxidative processes, including the formation of iron-3 oxide, contributed to the reddish hue of the Martian surface. Mars has experienced ice ages, driven by changes in its orbit and tilt. The planet's obliquity and eccentricity cause variations in ice distribution, with ice accumulating near the equator during high obliquities. Moisture from the ice caps travels to lower latitudes, forming frost or snow deposits mixed with dust. The atmosphere contains fine dust particles on which water vapor condenses, resulting in a thick mantle with a mixture of ice and dust covering large areas of the planet's surface. Overall, the study of Mars' water history provides valuable insights into its past climate and can shed light on future explorations on the planet.
Since the Viking lander's mission in 1976, NASA has focused on a follow-the-water strategy on Mars in the search for potential habitable environments. Liquid water is considered a necessary but not sufficient condition for life as we know it, as other environmental factors also play a role in determining habitability. Various chemical, physical, geological, and geographic attributes shape the environments on Mars, and their combination helps scientists predict locations with greater or lesser habitability potential. To protect Mars from potential Earth-based microbial contamination, scientists are identifying potential habitats where stowaway bacteria from spacecraft could survive and proliferate. They believe that evidence of past or present life on Mars could be found in subsurface environments, shielded from harsh surface conditions like perchlorates, ionizing radiation, desiccation, and freezing. Habitability may extend kilometers below the surface in a hypothetical hydrosphere or near the subsurface in contact with permafrost. Several rovers and missions, such as Curiosity and the ExoMars program, are dedicated to assessing Mars' past and present habitability potential. They investigate biosignatures and search for evidence of past water, which is crucial for understanding the planet's history and potential for life. Over the years, various missions, including Mariner 9, Viking Program, Mars Global Surveyor, and Mars Pathfinder, have provided significant findings regarding water on Mars. Evidence of dry river beds, canyons, erosion and deposition patterns, and weather fronts suggests the presence of past water on the planet. Outflow channels and branched valley networks provide further indications of water activity. The mineral composition analyzed by instruments like the Thermal Emission Spectrometer on Mars Global Surveyor and the presence of olivine have helped identify dry regions. However, the extremely low atmospheric pressure on Mars makes it challenging for pure liquid water to exist on the surface. Overall, these missions and discoveries have advanced our knowledge of water's role in shaping the Martian landscape and provided valuable insights into the potential for habitable environments on the Red Planet. The 2001 Mars Odyssey mission provided significant evidence for the presence of water on Mars. The orbiter's neutron spectrometer revealed that much of the ground on Mars is loaded with water ice, and the planet has enough ice just beneath the surface to fill Lake Michigan twice. Mars has a high density of ice just under the surface from 55 degrees latitude to the poles, with one kilogram of soil containing about 500 grams of water ice. However, close to the equator, the soil contains only 2% to 10% water. Scientists believe that much of the water is also locked up in the chemical structure of minerals, such as clay and sulfates. The orbiter discovered vast deposits of bulk water ice near the surface in equatorial regions. The presence of water is seen morphologically and compositionally at locations like the Medusi Fossi Formation and the Tharsis Montes. Evidence suggests that the southern hemisphere may have a layered structure, indicating stratified deposits beneath a now extinct large water mass. The Phoenix Lander further confirmed the existence of large amounts of water ice in the northern region of Mars. It discovered dice sized clumps of bright material that vaporized, strongly indicating they were composed of water ice. Phoenix also detected water vapor when heating a sample to zero degrees Celsius, demonstrating the presence of stable liquid brine droplets. Additionally, the lander observed permafrost polygons and seasonal snowfall from cirrus clouds. The Mars Exploration Rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, found extensive evidence for past water on Mars. Spirit discovered hints of water history in a rock named Humphrey and evidence of silica-rich patches. Opportunity detected gephyte, carbonate-rich rocks, and hematite, all indicative of past water. It also found layered rocks and blueberry-like hematite concretions. Overall, the findings from these missions support the idea that Mars once had significant amounts of water flowing across its surface, and the presence of ancient wet environments suggests the planet's potential for habitability in the past. And that concludes our fascinating journey into the captivating world of water on Mars. From the groundbreaking discoveries of the Mariner 9 mission to the latest findings from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and other rovers, we've delved deep into the tantalizing evidence of water-related processes on the Red Planet. Throughout this video, we've learned that Mars has a complex and dynamic history with water, and the presence of ancient riverbeds, canyons, and lake-like features points to a time when liquid water flowed freely on its surface. 
the detection of water ice beneath the subsurface and the existence of present-day water ice near the equator have challenged our understanding of Martian climate and geography. The implications of water on Mars extend beyond scientific curiosity. The search for water and potential traces of life has been at the heart of our exploration of the planet. As we continue to uncover more about Mars, the quest to understand whether life ever arose there intensifies, sparking imaginations and inspiring the next generation of explorers. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with the latest discoveries and space exploration content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And as always, feel free to share your thoughts, questions, or suggestions in the comments below. Your support keeps our mission of exploring the cosmos and sharing knowledge alive. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through the mysteries of water on Mars. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep dreaming of the wonders that lie beyond our planet's boundaries. This is Cybot GPT, signing off and remember, the sky is not the limit, it is only the beginning.